A lot of research in world Englishes is devoted to the study of ongoing changes and variation in grammar. In this module, we'll talk about the use of corpora for studying these variations and changes. Corpus is a body of written or spoken material, usually stored as an electronic database. Um, corpus, uh, the use of corpus for research has uh, become uh, more prevalent only recently with the developments uh, in the computer. Corpus can also be defined as a collection of linguistic data, either compiled as written text or as a transcription of recorded speech, which means a corpus can comprise both written and oral language. Before uh, continuing, let's take a look at why is there an increasing interest in the use of corpus uh, for linguistic research. It is because a corpus can provide us with a lot of information at one place. It can offer lexical information, which means the information about uh, the words in a language. It can also provide us with morphosyntactic information. Uh, morphosyntax is an interaction of morphology and syntax. Morpholo morphology, as you may know, is the study of words and their formation. And syntax is the study of uh, sentences and their formation. And an interaction of the two is morphosyntax. Um, for example, number is a morphosyntactic unit because uh, when you use a plural, you need to make changes in the structure of the word, in the formation of the word, uh, by adding S at the end of the noun. And you also need to make changes, uh, syntactic changes, uh, to make sure that the subject, the noun, uh, which is plural, agrees with the verb. So in this way, a number is a morphosyntactic entity. Then a corpus can also provide us with semantic information, that is, information about meanings of words and pragmatic information. Now, pragmatic uh, information would also include meanings of words, etc. But it's not just the meanings of the words. It is more about social use of the language, uh, the appropriate use of the language in different contexts. An example which uh, can probably explain this point better is um, whenever, and it happens mostly in outer and expanding circle uh, countries, um, when a person is asked, how are you, they take it um, they take it in their, they take this phrase, I mean, in its literal meaning and they start explaining if they have a problem, if they've been ill, etc. Although it is just a greeting and it does not require an answer, so if you know the pragmatics of the use of English in response to how are you, you'll always say, I'm fine even if you're very ill or tired or whatever. And so this, this uh, knowledge of the appropriate use of language in different contexts is pragmatic information and a corpus can provide us with all these different kinds of information at one place. Let's take a look at this study which was carried out in 1991 by Collins. It's a study of uh, models of English. Models, as you again may know, are words like must, should, ought, need, uh, have got to, etc. Um, for this study, a subset of models, models was um, selected. Uh, models of obligation and necessity which included must, should, ought, need, and have to, or have got to, were selected. The study used uh, a very um, large number of uh, words. The data was really huge for this study. It comprised 250,000 words. The words which were collected for this study, they were drawn from different genres. Um, the, these genres included press coverage from Australian English corpus, 
formal writing from um, a textbook on linguistics, transcripts of lunch and dinner party conversations uh, by a previous uh, study, and relatively formal speech from Senate. So, the data comprised um, uh, samples of language from a variety of contexts. As far as samples of American and British English were concerned, they were drawn from other previously um, conducted studies or previously collected um, uh, data. For American English, Hermarine 1978 was used and for British English, Quotes 1983, this data was used. The study made um, different findings um, regarding the frequency distribution of the selected models. The study found out that have to and the variant, if we take have got to as a variant of have to, they are the most frequent items. The frequency of should in parliamentary speech was, um, it turned out to be quite high, perhaps because in parliamentary speech, a lot of advice and suggestions are given. The frequency of ought and need um, was very small. Um, and it was also found out that press reports make the least use of models, perhaps because of the nature of information that they convey to the readers. Regarding the comparison of uh, the occurrence of these models in different varieties, um, it was discovered that there is a higher frequency of must, should and ought in British and American English. There was no occurrence at all of need, have to and have got to in the American corpus. Um, ought also had a very low frequency in all the three corpora. And it was also found out that need uh, was non-existent in American English corpus. Overall, these research findings tell us that it's not only the outer and expanding circle varieties, but even inner circle varieties which are subject to change and variation. So it's not, uh, variation is not a phenomena which is um, relevant only to uh, outer and expanding circle varieties of English, but all varieties of English are subject to variation. Um, this variation, which is observed especially in native English speaking varieties, um, is likely to have an impact on the codification and description of world Englishes. Obviously, when it comes to codifying uh, world Englishes and selecting a model for standardizing these Englishes is concerned, it will become a little confusing, a little difficult when uh, selection of a variety um, will be considered um, because there is so much variation within these, these varieties. So which variety to consider will be a big question. Now, why is corpora being used um, so um, so much in World English research and why is it recommended? It is because um, a corpus gives us real data um, and uh, researchers are then uh, given an opportunity to deal with the entire range of use of uh, different words, in this case models. So it's not that um, you, when you use uh, particular data, you are able to focus only on uh, one uh, um, element or only one point. In, in a corpus, um, the researchers have this advantage that uh, they can take a look at the entire range of use of different words and linguistic items. Um, a corpus also makes comparison across varieties and within varieties possible. So if you, for example, have a corpus of uh, British English um, and different varieties of British English, you can make a comparison among those varieties of British English. If your intention is to compare um, British uh, English variety with a South Asian English variety, you can make use of the corpora of two, these two varieties. 
so um uh, corpus analysis makes it possible to compare varieties um to make a comparison across varieties and within varieties so in this way we can see that corpus analysis can prove very useful for research in wild englishes